best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. As a retailer, you have a commitment to yourself and to your business to stay in business. I mean, at the end of the day, if people do not come into your shop and they do not give you money, you don't stay alive. Now, I, no, sorry, that's mostly true. That's true in 99% of the case. Now, there's definitely the scenario of uh, people who, you know, are just rich and uh, they don't really need the store to make money or not. You know, they can just lose money. Now, that's that tends to be rare because, look, one of the reasons why people get rich is they tend to be careful about their money. So if somebody's rich, right, there's this narrative that gets put out um, in, in comics a lot right now around capitalism bad and money is bad and the money is the root of all evil and this kind of stuff. Uh, but the reality is that if uh, if you have if you have amassed wealth, if you're doing well in life, then uh, you you got there for a reason. The money didn't uh, fall out of the money tree and just kind of land in your pocket. It uh, it was to, you know in most cases it was earned. Even if it was inherited, you 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 want to keep that money because if you've got a lot of money but you have no idea of what to do with it, how to spend it, how to keep it growing, then very soon you are not rich anymore. <laughs> The money is gone. So I don't, I don't, I, you know, there's this narrative out there is like, ah, there's a bunch of rich people out there just blowing money for no apparent reason. Um, yeah, not as much as you think. I mean, you know, it's always fun to see those people on TMZ acting like fools and that helps fuel, you know, sites like that. But in terms of like retail shops, nobody who's super real wealthy opens up a shop and just runs it into the ground because screw it, they're rich. That's just, that's, that's not, it's a, it's a nice uh, Twitter story. It's, it's <laughs> people who do that, put it this way. If that happens, it doesn't happen over and over again because the money goes away. It tends to vanish. Uh, but what is common, or not not common, but what is a scenario is uh, in the Seattle area, uh, where I had shops for for quite a while, I think, uh, during my my span of running shops, I think 20 years or so, I had shops on and off in the Seattle area, uh, sometimes multiple shops. I mean, everybody knows who I am at this point, but regardless, um, the uh, there were shops that would open up and the classic scenario was, you know, Microsoft, a, uh, you know, rich guy who's working at Microsoft, high level, has lots of money. The wife uh, opens up a something, an art gallery, a, you know, a, a what we would call a boutique business. And this is the case where it's the, uh, the guy's wealthy and the wife wants something to do. A business is born. Whether a business makes money or not is irrelevant because it's being funded by somebody else's paycheck. And that does happen, you know, but again, you know, that tends to happen for, for moderately rich people, not super rich people. Because again, super rich people get, get irritable when their money's just being flushed out of the toilet often. Uh, but there were some shops up there. There's a shop up in Mill Creek. And I remember it kind of clearly because uh, that shop um, went hard in on Twitter kind of when the, a lot of the angst was really starting to boil. And uh, there was some customer that went in asking for a comic from Chuck Dixon or, or so. They went in asking for a comic and then the store owner basically told him to get out. And uh, then it, it hit Twitter and, it, you know, it, it kind of spun around there. And that was a shop where it was uh, operated by the spouse of a, a wealthy executive. And it didn't, you know, it, it did not. I think it lasted a year, maybe a year and a half. And it closed. And it closed, I, I don't know, maybe from a combination of people stop wanting to see it as a money pit or um, people just, uh, you know, it, it's it, they get bored. The other thing about businesses I found is when there's no drive to actually make money and be successful in it, um, I tend to find that the people involved lose interest relatively quickly. They just don't, uh, they don't care. But, you know, all this is, is kind of my way of saying that, you know, retailers, they have, they, you know, in, in self-interest, I'm being very pragmatic here. They want to make money. And so when they act against their own self-interest, um, it tends to go badly for them. Now, some retailers, I mean, we've all seen on, on Twitter, some retailers have gone hard in the, uh, you know, certain groups are a hate group and, you know, these people are bad and other things. Um, in some cases, it's worked out badly for those businesses. The businesses have, have underperformed and it, it hurts because, you know, the funny thing about the marketplace is kind of what side you're on on an issue tends to evaporate to the mass market. The mass market doesn't inherently care about sides. They just care about whether they feel comfortable shopping in your shop or not. So even if somebody is coming in and they 100% agree with your politics and everything else, 
if you're acting like a loon about your politics saying, you know, hey, if you voted for the other guy, don't shop here. Even people who agree with you will stop shopping there because they just don't they don't want that BS when they're buying, you know, milk or, you know, car parts or comics. That's just not they, they, they don't the people, people, human beings don't naturally lean into that kind of conflict when they're trying to actually make a purchase. And the, the retail business is very much a transactional business. Starbucks kind of made everybody confused a while back by talking about how uh, the retail business is actually a social experience and, you know, inviting people to come in and hang out in the shop and, you know, and, and do work there and, you know, have coffee. But and that works for a coffee shop. But but not not for most businesses. And even in Starbucks, you know, very quietly, a lot, this does not get a lot of attention. But if you come in and you, you know, you're not just a quiet customer sitting there minding your own business doing work, Starbucks kicks you out. Like, you know, they don't let people just randomly come in and, and start causing chaos. They, they do kick you out. And this uh, this bubbled up at one point where uh, Starbucks was kicking out people who were, you know, uh, aggressive activists, let's say. And um, then Starbucks tried to unionize and CEOs like, no, I mean, this is this is actually a fascinating story. If you go look into this, it's an example of, you know, even companies and things that are perceived or, or projected as being, you know, very ideological. Um, at the end of the day, the successful ones prioritize money because, you know, I, I guess in the words of uh, Mags and, and Beat and others, because um, capitalism and how awful it is. But. <laughs> If you don't have money, you don't stay in business. It gets it gets pretty clean. Um, so people sent me this uh, tweet by Nick Lowe, where uh, Nick Lowe, of course, editor, Spider-Man Comics, uh, he says, uh, you know, um, he's having a back and forth with a fan. And uh, he says, uh, you know, th there's an argument proceeding. And then it comes to a head with this. He says, not to be a stickler, but that was a building in China, and that was a fun story. We didn't do that to sell a spider car. They're arguing They're arguing about something, I don't know, whatever. Whether you like it or not, before and after that Parker industry story, we've had many goals, including telling a good story and selling that good story. He's talking about, the, I think, the time where uh, Spider-Man Peter Parker was a rich tech mogul. It was, it was, a, it was not a good story, and it also self-destructed very quickly. I think they're in and out of that storyline in a year. Like it was, it was strange. Like if you're going to, you know, rapidly shift, you know, Spider-Man, the guy, the Parker loser. I mean, that, the, the part that irritated me about that storyline was they're like, we can't have married to Mary Jane. Cause that's just nobody, nobody could relate to that married. No, he's got to be the, uh, Parker luck, bad luck, uh, loser, uh, who's, uh, you know, struggling. We got it. We got to have him there. And then they turn around a couple years later, like, I know let's make him Elon Musk. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, who, whose idea was that? It was a bad idea. Anyway, so the argument's going on. So Nick Lowe kind of steps in to explain. And the poster that's, that he's arguing with says, um, right, it was a few years ago, and I just remember feeling let down with a lot of the Marvel stories at that time. This would be coming right after uh, Secret Wars. And once I seen that, I stopped reading them. I started collecting more back issues, read a lot more DC and Image, started looking up some more of my favorite authors. Um... I, you know, that there's nothing wrong with that answer. I always think about these things in Twitter. Like if somebody came into a comic shop and told me that, you know, would I feel offended? And I think basically what this person's communicating is, hey, I didn't really like the story. I started reading other things. And if, if you're the person who created or helped work on that story, that would probably feel hard to you. I would feel, I don't know, it would feel personal. Um, but if somebody came into my shop and said, Hey, I stopped shopping in your shop. It just, you know, location wasn't really convenient. I didn't really like the vibe here. So I, I found a, a good shop and I started shopping elsewhere. What would I say? Well, Nick Lowe said, uh, glad you found some stuff you like to read. And that was it. He just kind of ended it there. And um, a number of people sent this to me and said, you know, basically kind of uh, look at this jackass. Uh, why isn't Nick Lowe trying to keep the customer? Why isn't he like, hey, come back? I don't know. I, I get the feeling. I get that uh, for sure. Uh, but I've struggled with, uh, you know, again, somebody walks in my comic shop, says, hey, I decided to go somewhere else. Um, my response would most likely be, hey, I'm glad you found something you like. I'd probably say something very similar to Nick, because in that position, you should be gracious. You should be thoughtful. You should be, you know, you should be respectful of that fan. You shouldn't be in there going, 
oh yeah, shop somewhere else, huh? Get out. You know, go go eat at Arby's if you. Has, you know, I'm just kidding, but I would never wish that on you. But but I mean, you know that that would be that would be the wrong thing to do. Uh, now, where I differ a little bit from from Nick's answer is what I if I was in that situation, putting myself in those shoes, I would probably say something along the lines of, "Hey, I'm glad you found I, I'm glad you found something uh, that you liked. I, I'm glad you found a store that works for you." Because in my head, I'd be going, "Hey, as long as you're staying in comics, there's a chance to get you back." I'd probably say that out loud a little bit. I'd say. Hey, I'd still like to, you know, I'd still, I, I'd still want your business. So, you know, I'd love your feedback. Well, what was it about the vibe in the story you didn't like? Was there something that we did that drove you away? I understand, you know, that you've moved on. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to make either of us uncomfortable by begging you to come back. But I'd like to know, you know, tell me more. What, what, where did we go wrong? Tell me more about, uh, about how, uh, you know, we should think about this in the future. And, you know, if there's some things to change, we're going to change them. And if we win you back in the future, that's great. And if we don't, you know, I, I, I'm still glad you're collecting comics, but uh, tell me, tell me what I could do to do better. That would be kind of my response. The, the problem with all of this, though, is that, you know, you have some people who write, again, this, this person has thread, uh, I don't know, let's go bills. I don't know. But anyway, this, this person, um, you know, wrote a fairly respectful answer. Didn't, didn't say, you know, it's like, hey, I just, I felt let down, so I started reading other things. I think that deserves a polite response in, in, in reply. And I think Nick did that. It's just, you know, you kind of wish there was a couple pieces more. Like Nick would have been like, hey, I do hope we get you back. We got some exciting storylines coming up. And, you know, uh, maybe, uh, maybe there's a chance to get you again in the future. Oh, something along those lines. The challenge is that the feedback doesn't always come in respectful. Sometimes the feedback comes in of, uh, you went full woke and hired the gays. So screw you. You know, in which case, you know, saying, hey, I hope you found something you liked. Let me know what we can do in the future to, to win you back. It, that would be silly. That would be pointless. If, you know, if somebody, um, somebody who's throwing that kind of response out is, is not somebody you can kind of turn around and, and figure out how to do business with in the future. It's just, it's, it's dead at that point. Uh, but that, it, I, I go through all this because I think that there's a retail mentality. Generally speaking, if you go to successful comic book shops, most comic shop owners, most people who work in the shops will answer like I answered. They'll talk like I talk because in their minds, it's again, it's, it's dollars and cents. It's all, you know, you, if you give us uh, you know, I want your money at some point in the future. That's how I'm going to stay in business. How I'm going to keep the lights on. So therefore I'm going to be as gracious as humanly possible. Unless you give me a clear reason where I can no longer be gracious, in which case I'm just going to try and shut down the conversation as soon as I can, because uh, it, it turns from, you know, I, there's a there's a chance to continue making money from this person. To there's never a chance to make money from this person. And when you hit never make a chance, you know anyone who's in business will tell you get out. Just get out. You're done at that point. Just get out of the conversation. Get out of it as, as quickly as possible. You know, don't don't be a crazy a hole about it because then you run the risk of you know creating a show for others. You know, I again, if if you're a shop owner and somebody comes in, even if they're disrespectful and goes, I hate this shop. It smells like Arby's. I mean, which would be, that would be a hell of an insult. I mean, I, I would have a hard time collecting my, keeping my cool in that case. But if somebody came in and, and, you know, started really going off on you, one of the worst things you could do as a shop owner is go, oh yeah, well, you're a Nazi. Get out of my store, Nazi, you dumb Nazi. Doing that is if not because of the person I'm talking to. That person's already lost as a customer. There's that, there's that person, somebody's got to come in and, and shout and compare you to Arby's as somebody who's dead to you. But Chances are you have some other people in that store just milling about buying comics. And you, what you want is for those people to see the person yelling at you, you know, the customer yelling at you. You want them to see that person as a lunatic. You, you don't want them seeing both, you know, the, the customer and the shop owner as lunatics. And if you get into a big brawl, you know, some customers be, you know, they enjoy the show. They enjoy the drama. They'll be like, all right, I'm glad you, you, you handed it to that guy. But most people will just silently stop coming back. Because in their heads, they're like, I, you know, it's, that's why I mentioned earlier. It's like, I don't want to be part of this. So, you know, Nick's, Nick's tweet, I, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. It's polite. It's, 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 you know, and, and, but I'm, but, you know, I, I do get the, I do get the perspective of like, hey, shouldn't he be trying to win this customer back? Yeah, he should. But again, I'm easier said than done. And I guess, uh, and maybe this is just a lowering the bar of expectations. 
I mean, good for him for responding that way because there are other editors, other writers out there who would immediately uh, start calling the person a fascist and other things and, and go and go ballistic on it. And that, yes, that is worse. That's why we're in this situation where the temperature is so hot that even pretty benign statements gets misunderstood. That's the problem. We have to, we have to walk that back a little bit. It's very hard in today's environment right now to just have kind of respectful, Hey, you know, cool. Well, you, 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 you buy what you want and we're going to be over here making comics and hope to see you again someday. We'll be here for you when you are, when, if you come back. It's, it's harder to do that than it used to be. It shouldn't be, but it's going to kind of have to take everybody collectively kind of linking arms and going, you know what? It's today. It's, uh, April 1st. And, uh, I don't have no idea when this video is going to air, but it's whatever day. And, uh, we've decided we're all going to just take the asshole percentage down about 25%. We're all just going to, just going to step forward. But, you know, <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where social media screws it all up. Um, you know, we've now trained writers, editors, and fans and customers that, you know, being a prick equals engagement. And as long as that's the game, as long as, uh, you know, you're a, you're, you're a cover artist at, at Marvel or you're a customer or you're somebody doing crowdfunding, whatever you happen to do, as long as you are rewarded by hot takes, I mean, look, one of the things that's commonly said about this channel from, from some people is it's like, oh, Perch is very boring and dull. He has these very milk toast takes. I, it, I, it's funny because people throw that bait out and it's like they, they grin like, hey, let's see if that pisses Perch off. No, it, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't piss me off. And again, it's, it's because I think like a retailer, in my mind, it's like, good, good. I don't want to be known as a raving asshole. I don't want to be known as, hey, the guy who uh, gives crazy hot takes on YouTube and entertains us all. Uh, that That's not money. At least that's not my money. For people who are making money off YouTube, makes sense. But for me, uh, that's 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 friction. Some people are like, ah, Perch is a very middle-of-the-road guy. It's like, great. That's how cash is made. Bluntly. <laughs> that That is... That is, as a retailer, somebody making, 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 you know, as a consultant, somebody making his money, very, very, very happy with the money I've made. Um, why would I want to be anything else? Anything else is, is harmful. And so maybe it's one of those cases where if you're in comics, if you're a retailer, whoever you might be, uh, we got to get people more in the mentality of like some of these jobs. Yeah. Should be milk toast. Absolutely. They should be dull. They should be focused on the task at hand. Food for thought. Thanks for listening.